Can a book written in the last century help you be a better programmer today? If you make your living programming, The Pragmatic Programmer from Journeyman to Master is for you. It's fun and it will help you become a better programmer. It's written by Andrew Hunt and David Thomas, two experts who helped to create the Agile Manifesto. G'day. Welcome, my friend, to WTK, the What to Know Show. I'm your host, Peter Whalen, and I've hired, trained, and managed dozens of programmers. A pragmatic programmer is sensible and practical. This is one of the few books that I recommend every programmer read. In fact, if you read only one book related to your career, then not to be impolite, but don't read any. Professionals read more than one book. As you know, if you're planning on a career in programming, you're planning on learning. He didn't get into this field to be mediocre. This was written in 1999, the last century. Technology has improved a lot in the last 20 years, so why do I still recommend this? People haven't changed. Some of the details are outdated, but the principles captured in here have been around for years before this was published. I predict we'll be using them 20 years from now. For example, work with a user to think like a user. That's timeless. At the back of the book is a quick reference guide. Uh, I'll include a link to it in the show notes so that you can get the gist of it. My favorite line is about documentation. If it's on the web, the programmers may even read it. The sample code is written in Perl, Python, and Ruby. It's easy to understand, which means that you'll learn quickly. It's the kind of book to keep handy. You can read one tip at a time in no particular order. The, su- the success of this book spawned dozens of good titles on the Pragmatic Bookshelf imprint. It was in the Pragmatic Programmer that I learned the acronym DRY. Don't repeat yourself. This What to Know show puts DRY into action. Instead of repeatedly telling programmers what books I found useful, I published my recommendations. That means that you get a list of books curated by someone with over 30 years experience. Don't repeat yourself, dry, neatly sums up the value of having one place to update things. As opposed to wet, we enjoy typing. A copy and paste coder takes that approach. And then there's damp, which sounds like it would be halfway between wet and dry, but it has nothing to do with either. Damp is my favorite. It stands for descriptive and meaningful phrases, which is the way to name everything. Name things what they are. There's a comedy routine from the 30s, Who's on First by Abbott and Costello, and that's a fun way to remember the damp tip. I know what you're thinking, what can a couple of jokers from the 30s teach me about programming today? That's before I was born. Heck, it's before I was born. Watch Who's on First and you'll always remember the importance of damp. I'll include a link to it in the show notes. As you know, we spend 10 times more hours reading code than writing it, so make it readable. Renaming objects to reflect what they are is the most common example of refactoring. It's simple, but it's not easy. How often do you see generic names like manager, portal, or service? Use descriptive and meaningful phrases to reduce your code review WTF per minute rate. For example, you see a variable named STD. It's not obvious what STD is. Is it an abbreviation for short-term disability, short-term debt, or standard deviation? Your guess is as good as mine. STD could stand lots of things. A damp name would be better. (coughs) So we now have tools to make it easier than ever to use these tips. I graduated from a computer science program, but I don't call myself a scientist. Uh, Programming isn't exactly a science. Years ago, my job title was software engineer, but I don't call myself an engineer. Programming isn't engineering, it's kind of a craft. Which brings us to the first tip in here. Care about your craft. Why am I telling you this? If you're a programmer, be a good one. You didn't get into this field to be mediocre. You watch this far, you're curious, you're learning, you're one of the good ones. You matter. Be the best that you can be, if you want to. Read the Pragmatic Programmer. Some of the ideas in here continue to develop into their own disciplines, such as test-driven development. 
What's that? There's a new edition coming out. Oh, when? October 2019. Oh, well, I'll have to read that. I'll be back. Okay, I've read the 20th anniversary edition in beta. It now has 100 tips and includes more languages and technologies. It's chapter-based, uh, more so than this one. If, if you haven't bought this yet, then for sure get the 20th anniversary edition of The Pragmatic Programmer. They've added content that lines up with my shows on what to know about passwords and multi-factor authentication. And my favorite line from the 20th anniversary edition is, now we're faced with a generation of object-oriented developers who use inheritance for one of two reasons. They like types, they don't like types. I laughed out loud at that one. Reading this will only get you so far. Discuss this book online or teach the tips to a coworker. The more you do that, the better you'll understand it. And would you do me a favor? Share this video. Click on the thumbs up button to like this video and click on the picture in the upper right corner to subscribe to my channel because that's helpful. Thank you for watching. Be seeing you. That's fairly interesting. This is the What to Know Show with your host, Peter Weyland.